In this video, I've got loads of quick tips for you to help you when you're practicing your scales and to avoid some mistakes I've seen lots of people make over the years teaching. And these are all mainly aimed at beginners. Hopefully they'll make things feel a bit easier for you. Let's get straight into it. This first thing may seem fairly obvious, but I do see lots of people making this mistake when they lose concentration for a moment. Make sure that you actually keep an eye, keep your target on the first note of the scale at the top and the bottom and at the start of every octave that you're playing. So if you're just playing one octave of F major, you need to keep your bookends as F and F because sometimes I see people running past the F and you get mixed up with what they're doing. And if you're playing two octaves, you need to keep your kind of reset target points as all the Fs. And the other part of that is that sometimes as people are playing, they actually get mixed up with which scale they're playing. So take a moment before each go to reset, think about the name of the scale you're playing and look at the overall shape that you need to move your fingers through. A common thing that I've seen is, let's say you're playing the F major scale again, at the top here, people might play the F sharp by accident, and that's likely because they've got F major mixed up with G major, which plays that shape at the top. So keep an eye on your beginning and end target points at every octave. Now, when you're practicing scales, it's really important that you've got really clearly in your mind the finger blocks you're going to use. So if we just look at the right hand here on D major, just one octave for now, but this is especially important with multiple octaves. The finger blocks are the first three notes and then the next four notes. And then if you're just doing one, you use your fifth finger at the top, or if you're doing another octave, you'd put your thumb under. And then going back to the last point, when you take that to two octaves, it's really important that you reset here. So what you can practice is your blocks like this. Get the shape of those finger blocks. Hit the top on its own. And you can go up and down playing them as chunks like that or like this. Move. What happens is when you've got those blocks clear, it gives you a solid foundation to be able to move through the blocks smoothly. And the other important part of that is that it helps you picture why those fingers work well the way they do. So the fingering becomes more intuitive and not like you're just memorizing or reciting finger numbers. Something people do a lot when they're starting out is skip fingers. So for example, instead of going finger one, to finger two, at some point they may skip two and go from finger one to three. Now when you're playing all your basic major and minor scales, there's no point where you should ever be skipping over fingers. So what you wanna try and do is to rely on your sense of feel that you're never skipping fingers, that you're never doing that, that it's always going to the next finger along unless you're starting again. By the way guys, quick plug, I do have PDFs available with fingers and graphics and notation for all the major scales and all the minor scales as a helpful aid when you're practicing. If this video is helpful, please hit the like button, it really helps out the channel. And let me know below in the comments if you've got any other tips that you think might help someone out. When it comes to practicing scales hands together, don't attempt it until you can do the left hand solidly on its own and the right hand solidly on its own first. And then even when you start practicing hands together, still make sure you go back and practice hands separately as well. You can go back and forth between hands apart and hands together. The mistake is that sometimes when you only practice hands together, you don't notice any mistakes that you're making on one specific hand. So one of the hardest things about learning scales at the beginning is putting your hands together. And people often get mixed up with when the hands change positions at different times. So there's a, a way to practice that to get that to stick. First of all, make sure you get one octave playing hands together 
super solid before you attempt two octaves. That's the first thing. But what you want to do is build up in stages. So if I was practicing the G major scale, I can just I can practice the first um, three notes easily because there's no turns here. Just feel your fingers moving in order in the same direction without skipping any fingers. And then I like to just add on one note, which is the turn. One, two, three, thumb. A kind of little mental trick that I like to get people to think about is to just focus on the hand that's doing the hard bit, that's making the turn. Let the other fingers just move by feel in order, in the right direction, like I said earlier, without skipping any fingers. So ignore this hand, concentrate on this one to start with. One, two, three, thumb. Once you can do that, well, the next note's easy because it's just the next finger along. So now practice up to the fifth note. Okay, that's good. Now after this, your left hand has run out of fingers, so it's gonna make a turn. But what's good is, your right hand now has enough fingers to get to the top. It's just going in order. Make sure you keep an eye on the overall shape of the scale, so you hit the F sharp, but there's no other turns. So once you've made your right hand turn, switch your concentration to your left hand. Now you can look at your left, and you've got to put three over, so you've got enough fingers. And once you've done that, you're in position to go all the way to the end. So if you get that solidly, you can just go up to the top. So the main principle is just practice it in logical stages and build up as you go. And when you get to the second octave, sometimes people get mixed up here. Oh, do I put three over? Do I put four over? Well, the trick is, is not to just remember what's coming up next, because that can be hard in the flow of things is to picture, okay, what does my hand look like if I started in this octave? If my hand started here, I'd obviously start with five, so four fits in there. But you've played the G with your thumb because you came from below, but just picture your hand where it was and then that you can see that four fits in there. If you're then getting mixed up throughout the second octave, you really wanna feel that reset point at the first note of the second octave and feel the repetition of the pattern under your fingers that you already played in the first octave. Something people do sometimes without realizing is crunching notes together like this a little bit as they move through the notes. So what we're after is a nice clean sound. So this note is lifted off as the next note is played. But a good way to practice yourself out of doing that is to practice staccato. So staccato means when you play detached and lift off the note. So there's a, there's a big gap in between the notes like that. They're not legato, which is making them sound smooth and connected. This forces you, because you're really listening out for that staccato sound, to lift off the notes. So you're lifting your wrist up and releasing the weight of the key so the key can pop back up before you push the next note. Not by forcing fingers to jab up and down like this, but by using your arm as well as fingers together, controlling the weight of your arm, so slightly lifting up in between the notes to release the keys. Sometimes it's easier to get this if you over-exaggerate the movement in the beginning. And then once you get it, it can become more subtle with practice and then have another go at legato too. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone to explore in all kinds of topics, from business to painting, from web development to music. I'm slowly trying to renovate my house at the moment and using this course, 3D modeling and 3D printing for beginners using SketchUp by Steammaker Studio, I was able to learn all the basics I needed to help me create this 3D model of the loft space on the side of my house. It's a work in progress, but even that has allowed me to carefully plan out exactly how I'm gonna create a hatch and board the space. There's lots to explore and when I have time, I'll be looking at the Photoshop courses available. So it's a great place to level up any skills you may need for work.
So there's lots of things to explore. If you want to join today and discover something new, the first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, your hand position is really important for playing in general and getting it right is gonna make learning scales so much easier. You wanna make sure that you're not playing with flat, straight out fingers like this. You can't use your fingers properly like that and your thumb can't even reach the keyboard. You wanna make sure that your wrist isn't dipping down below the keyboard. It wants to be sitting up above the keyboard like this, just above the keys, so your fingers can gently curve down to the keys. That makes it easier to use your fingers properly, reach the notes more easily, and keep your hand and fingers relaxed. So this is a starting point. We also need to keep in mind that we don't wanna be static as we actually play. We want to be able to move and flow whilst you're playing your scale like this. Do be careful not to go out of position as you're playing, which is what people often do. So they might start out well, and then as they go along, they flatten their fingers or maybe pull their hand back. Now, the other really important thing is that when there's only white keys, having your hand about here is fine. But when there's a mixture of black and white keys, like there is at the top of this G major scale, your hand position must be a bit deeper in this way into the keyboard so your fingers can reach and get nicely over the top of the black keys. Don't play them right close to the tip, get in a little way so that you get a good landing on the key. So with C major, I'm all on this white key plane. But with something like E major, I've got two black keys at the beginning so my hand is gonna be deeper in so I can reach everything in that first block. And then I'm gonna remain deeper in because the next block also has two black keys at the top. And this is where thinking and looking ahead, being able to see ahead comes in as well so that you know what position you need to be in for the next group of notes, which is another reason to practice those blocks, like I said earlier. One of the things that people can be a bit more awkward playing in the beginning is the thumb turns. So I'll demonstrate in the right hand going up, but it's the same thing for the left hand going down. So firstly, coming back to hand position, when you play the note before the thumb turn, make sure that you play the note deeper into the keyboard and that gives you more room straight away to get your thumb over to the next key. If you have your finger here, then you can't reach it and you're forced to twist round. So one of the things you don't want to do is to be spinning round and twisting round like this, which is what I sometimes see beginners doing. And the other main thing that you don't want to be doing is to be keeping your hand static on the note before the turn and then forcing your thumb as far as it can get to that next note and then using your thumb to pull your fingers over. That's really tense. Your thumb doesn't want to be forced too far that way. So what I think is a better approach is actually a combination of a few things. So first of all, we want to make sure that our momentum is carried through the scale by moving our arm in the direction that we're going. So that makes everything flow. Combined with that, then we will still need to tuck our thumb under a bit to help us reach, but just not to the point where it feels forced. And the third thing is a kind of gesture with my hand as I make the turn, like this. It's a small movement, so I'll exaggerate it so you can see. So what I'm doing there is, I'm kind of starting the, the movement on the way up to the turn. And then I'm moving my hand almost in, not cross in this direction, but kind of a little bit that direction. And what that does is, it gives me a bit more space to tuck my thumb under. So I'm, I'm going in that direction, but I'm very slightly lifting up. So there's more space to get my thumb through this gap under here. 
And by doing this, you're bringing your thumb closer to the next note so you don't have to tuck under as much. You can see as I do this, my forearm very slightly rotates and importantly, my wrist joint is nice and loose so I can flow smoothly in the right direction. And then when you land on that note, you keep your momentum following through and just let the other fingers relax and come over the top. Don't pull from your thumb to get them over the top. Just let them relax and fall back into their kind of natural position, that side of your thumb. When you're playing scales in more than one octave, and especially with both hands, you need to make sure that you're sitting up properly and you're keeping a wide view of the piano. If we keep our vision too zoomed in on a small section of the piano, it can be quite difficult to keep an eye on both hands, but also to see what's coming up next. And if we don't see what's coming up next, it's very easy to play the wrong note or get our fingers in a muddle or have our hand in the wrong position to reach something. Another obvious one, but I have to say it, people always need reminding, and that's just trying to practice things too fast. We need to practice slow and relaxed and controlled so we can work on good rhythm, good timing, good technique. That's one of the reasons we practice scales so we can work on our technique. So it's important to get those things in place correctly and confidently and then the speed will come later. There's really no need to rush at the beginning. Make sure you're always practicing at a comfortable tempo. And similar to the last point, Something people often do, especially just after they've made a mistake or a few mistakes, is rushing to have the next go to try and fix it. So you make a mistake and you quickly jump back and do it again. And often when people do that, they, they do it even faster, which just kind of perpetuates the problem, makes it harder to get right. But it's rushing before you start is the real issue. So between each go, especially if you've made a mistake, just take a moment to reset, get your hands back in a good starting position, think about what you're doing, look at the scale shape that you're going to play once again, and then have your next go. That's an easy way to practice better. I hope that was helpful. If you are subscribed, hit the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when there's a new video out. And there's other videos on scales. I'll link down below in the description. Remember, you can check out Skillshare with that link below too. Thanks for watching.